All right, guys, welcome back for day two of Roots and Radicals test. Okay, so here we go. We have three functions here. Use the given functions to find the following. f of x, g of x, h of x. So f of x minus g of x. All I'm doing is replacing f of x with 3x. Minus my g of x function is x minus 4. Please make sure you put that in parentheses. That is important because if I distribute that minus sign in, I get 3x minus x plus 4 which ends up being 2x plus 4. And you are done. Simple as can be. All right, h of h of x. I am putting h of x into itself. So h of 2 plus x squared. Now my h function is 2 plus something squared. The something squared that I'm going to put in there is the 2 plus x squared. Now, just to show you guys a little bit of side work up here, what you end up doing here is 2 plus x squared times 2 plus x squared. So it's going to be foiling. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2x squared, plus 2x squared, plus x to the fourth. Um, so if I combine the 2x squareds together, I'm going to get 4x squared, plus x to the fourth. Okay. If I write this in standard form then, x to the fourth, plus 4x squared, plus 6. There you go. So foiling is the tough part. Finally, this is a little bit new, but it's actually easier. You kind of want to work your, yourself inside out, okay? You are putting negative 3 into h. So if I put negative 3 in for h, it's 2 plus negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is 9, which is 11. So this right here equals 11. So now it's g of 11. Well, look at your g function. It's x minus 4. Instead of x, I'm going to put in 11. 11 minus 4, 7. You win. You're all good. All right. Domain. All right, you have two questions that you ask yourself for every single one of these. Do I have an even powered root, and do I have an x in the denominator? So for this first one, do I have an even powered root? I do. So if you have an even powered root, you take what's under the square root, or whatever root power it is, you make it greater than or equal to 0. And I'm going to solve this. Subtract 2, subtract 2. Okay, negative 2. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x is greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds. Now we want to use interval notation. So, since it's greater than or equal to, I'm going to use bracket, negative 2 over 3, comma, is can go all the way to infinity, and we use a parentheses for it, okay? And then you're all good. Two is probably the hardest one, all right? Do you have an even powered root? I do, and look where it's at, it's in the denominator. Well, normally you would say x minus five is greater than or equal to zero, but because it's in my denominator, okay, I don't want it to equal zero. So instead, we just do x minus 5 is greater than 0. Add 5 over, x is greater than 5. Please note the difference. Since it's just greater than, it's going to be a parentheses. And yes, that does matter. That makes a big difference. So there's my domain. There's my domain. Okay. The two hard ones out of the way. Here we go. Do you have an even power root for part 3, number 3? No. But I do have an x in the denominator. So I do x squared cannot, oops, my bad, x squared minus 25 cannot equal 0. All right, let's solve for it. x squared cannot equal 25. If I square root left and right, I go x e cannot equal plus or minus 5. Don't forget the plus or minus. This one's tricky because the farthest left I can go is negative infinity. If I go along the number line, I can go all the way up until negative 5. I don't want it. So we use a parentheses, union, negative 5. I keep going to the right, and it gets to positive 5. Union, 5 to infinity. So what you're saying here is every single possible number except for negative 5 and 5, then you're good. Finally, my absolute favorite question of all time, okay, for the domain of 7x squared minus 11x plus 4, do I have an even-powered root? No. Do you have an x denominator? No. 
Your domain is neg infinity to the positive infinity. Smile because you are done. That easy. You will get one of those, so be aware. Okay. All right. Um, finally, back here. Part three. Find the inverse function of f of x equals square root of x minus five plus three algebraically. Then state state the domain of the inverse. All right. So, f of x can be rewritten as y. To find the inverse, you switch x and y. All right. So this becomes x equals square root of y minus five plus three. All right. Do some work. Subtract 3 over x minus 3 equals square root of y minus 5. I'm going to square both sides because I want to cancel out the square root. If I FOIL x minus 3, I get x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9. Sorry, now it's kind of hard to see. Ah, okay. Um, which ends up giving me x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals y minus 5. So if I add over the 5, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 14. And finally, we want to write out f inverse of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 14. Okay, now, if I want to state the domain of my inverse, okay, what I must also take in consideration is the original one. So for this, there's no even power roots and there's no... Um, x's in my denominators, but look at your original one. I do have an even powered root. So the domain has to take in consideration x, must five, x minus 5 must be greater than or equal to 0. If I solve that, x must be greater than or equal to 5, bracket 5 to infinity, and we're good. Okay? All good. Last part here then, determine algebraically whether or not f of x equals 7x minus 3 and g of x equals 1 7th x plus 3 7 are inverse functions. State yes or no. You must do f of g of x and you must do g of f of x. And they both have to equal x. This is what I'm after. All right. So if I don't get that, it's not an inverse. So let's start over here. f g of x. If I put 1 7th x plus 3 7 in, now, take a look at f. It's 7 times something minus 3. Just look at this with me. 7 times something minus 3. This is your something. Please don't panic because nice things are about to happen. 7 times 1 seventh cancels out. I get just x. 7 times 3 sevenths cancels out. I get plus 3. What is 3 minus 3? x. Hooray! Over here, g, my f of x is 7x minus 3. My g function is 1 7th times something plus 3 7 I'm putting this in for the something. Okay. Well, 7 times, 7x seven times 1 7th gives me this x. Um, this will give me, okay, uh, if I do this. Oh, I jumped ahead of myself. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. I was like, oh no, this isn't going to work. There we go. There we go. So 1 7 times negative 3 is negative 3 7. There we go. They cancel out. Okay. So what we're going to write is, yes, inverse functions. And the reason for it, oops, yes, inverse functions. And the reason for it is the work that you've shown here. Okay. That is all that you need. If you can handle that, you'll be in terrific shape. So... As always, guys, keep up the good work, and good luck.